All right, hello, wine-drinking people. Time for what I drank yesterday, and in this case, it's also what I'm trying to sell you today because we're doing our feature piece on this email on Fisher Vineyards. And this is a winer that's been around since the early 70s. Fred and Julie Fisher bought the property in 1973 and started this 35-year project of planting and developing this vineyard site. And they purchased another vineyard site also on the valley floor. The original site is up on Spring Mountain on the Sonoma side. And the valley floor piece that they purchased is, uh, well, right next to the Great Isley Vineyard. And they, they produced just a few wines here, just a few hundred cases of each. It wasn't until recently they added this Unity label, which is, uh, well, they needed something to sell, actually. Uh, because, like I said, most of these wines are far under a 1,000 case production. So they could sell all these just on their mailing list. At these, this point, these guys have worked with some of the best names in the business. Well, David Abreu uh, planted their vineyards. Uh, Paul Hobbs, one of their consultants. Aaron Pott today is uh, helping them. But uh, Whitney, uh, Robert, and Cameron, all three of the Fisher kids are involved in the uh, winery. This is truly a uh, <clears throat> family-run uh, winery today. And uh, like I said, they have a little help from Aaron Pott, but Whitney has been making the wines there for a long time. It's good to see uh, you know a small winery like this carry on the family tradition. And uh, we had uh, just a few wines uh, the other day, but... You know, anything that's available from this winery, I am happy to bring into the store because these wines are all outstanding, most excellent to killer in quantity. And it's nice to see some older vintage wines. And you know we love big bottles from large formats. And this happened to be the 06 Coach Insignia, which uh, uh, definitely got a little bottle age now. It's nice with the little Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon to have some bottle age to it. And these Magnums will last, uh, you know, definitely a little fresher than the, the 750 format when uh, you have a couple years of bottle age on them. So this one will last another 10, 20 years easily in your cellar. Well, what did we have to drink last night at uh, the Ritz-Carlton Via Luna? Well, uh, these guys put on a great show, and there's not a more beautiful setting in South Florida than the Ritz-Carlton right on Fort Lauderdale Beach. A perfect night last night. I love how these guys do their wine events. They have a little... Uh, uh, three stations set up, one for each wine. They pair a different food uh, course with each of the different wines. And uh, we started out with a little bit of the rosé last night, which um, a lot of people were surprised it wasn't sweet. Well, you know, when you get a rosé from a great producer like Fisher, you know they're not going to be producing some light, sweet wine like a white Zinfandel. This is a really nice dry rosé. And uh, for 20 bucks, people really enjoyed this wine. I'd have to say uh, it was the surprise of the night for many. Well, than the people that were expecting sweet wines. Anyways, the Chardonnay from Sonoma Mountain. Uh, this wine is, so they do two different Chardonnays here. They do the Whitney's and the Sonoma Mountain. And uh, the Whitney's is only down to 200 cases in production, so they don't have any of that available. It's a five-acre vineyard, 40 years old, needs to be replanted. But the Mountain Estate is a very steep vineyard, uh, planted on northeast-facing slope at about 1,500 feet on the Spring Mountain side. And they're the only people I know of that are up here producing Chardonnay. So a very unique style, a very mineral-driven style of Chardonnay with lots of everything, whole cluster press fermented new oak for 19 months aged uh, in the barrel on the leaves uh, naturally mallow happens in here and it's only about 75 percent never goes through 100 percent or hardly ever but a high natural acidity here really helps this wine handle all the oak and uh, they only produce about 636 packs so 300 and some odd 12 bottle cases of this wine every year very rich and uh some creme brulee, ripe peaches, toasty oak spice, vanilla, um, nutmeg showing here on the nose. A really big Chardonnay on the palate. A good hand of toasty oak spice, but a solid core of fruit here. And a firm hand of acidity uh, backing that up, holding everything together. If you like a big, full-blown Napa Chardonnay, uh, this wine is you and at the top level of quality. Most excellent juice. All right, next up, the uh, Mountain Estate Cabernet Sauvignon. And they do Mountain Estate Wedding Vineyard uh, from this uh, uh, the Spring Mountain property. And uh, just a tiny bit of Syrah that they only sell in the, uh, in the, in the, on the mailing list. And then the Valley Floor, uh, they do Lamb and Coach Insignia down there in the Cameron. And they do, used to do an RFC, but that vineyard was now in the process of being replanted. Everything is estate. As I mentioned before, that Unity label is the one that they use for purchase fruit. They're going to up the production of that to 3,500 cases for the cab and 1,200 for the shard. But that label even, very small production. All right, anyways, so only 670 cases of this wedding vineyard Mountain Estate or this Mountain Estate Cabernet produced. Good hand of fresh earth here. This is 07 vintage, so it's got a little bottle age. You really get the terroir coming out. Uh, and uh, fresh herbs and dark cocoa-like spice, dark currants and dark cherry fruit here. Really fresh and lively on the tongue. This wine's got a solid core of dark cherry and currant berry fruit with firm tannins, a good hand of that fresh earth and minerality, graphite, dark cocoa notes showing through on the finish. A big wine, but still elegant and balanced. Most excellent juice. The 2008 Coach Insignia. 
This is the vineyard uh, right next to the Isley Vineyard, and uh, this is only 565 cases of this wine produced. Um, this is a really uh, blockbuster style Cabernet Sauvignon here, but also elegant. You know, these are big wines, but not these big and showy, oaky, fruity wines that you get typically in Napa that score really big. Uh, this is a really complex wine, a big bouquet of fresh earth herbs complementing the current and black raspberry fruit on the nose, some dried floral notes as well, toasty oak spice, cocoa, and mocha. Really lovely nuance to this wine on the palate as well. These 2008 somewhat more evolved and uh, the tannin softening in these wines and really showing a nice amount of fruit here, some milk chocolate and earthy notes on the finish. Wine really drinking nicely, uh, but still, you got some time left in this one as well. you got a few years. This is Napa Valley Cabernet at its finest, most excellent juice. And these wines are all under $100, estate bottle juice around since the 70s, mature vineyards. These are some of the best wines coming out of Napa at a great price when you look at the competition, folks. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.